Okay, so in the last part, we looked at interpolation in 1D. So in other words, where we had um, data f of x. Um, in this case, we can go one stage further. And we think what happens if we have data where we have z values, which we've measured on an x, y uh, coordinate. So in other words, you have some kind of like map, um, height map or temperature map or, or something like that. Can we do interpolation with that? And of course, the answer is yes. So for the examples we're going to work with here, I've created a, a function that looks like this. So this is basically is a um, is a kind of peak function. So it's a, a cosine function, which is then multiplied by an exponential. And if you look at it there, then um, it, it ends up with um, a, a function that decays away uh, from zero. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create um, to start with some 25 data points scattered between plus or minus 10 in the x, y plane. OK, so that's our function there. We have to find our function. Um, and then we've created um, some more bits of code. So what the mesh grid line is doing is a function that going and creates um, a set of coordinates um, uh, of 2D or maybe more grid. So you give it a set of X values and a set of Y values, and it comes back and gives you a two dimensional array of X values and Y values that if you think about it, it's um, like uh, if you draw a graph, um, you've given it the, the axis labels X and Y, and it's come back and given you the coordinates of every single graph square in your graph. Um, OK, so we do that, and then I'm just going to add a, a small amount of random noise um, to those uh, data values to shift them a little bit so they're not exactly on the grid. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just uh, make a nice 3D plot function. So again, this is just creating a little utility function that's going to plot that data uh, for us. Uh, at least it will give us a nice little set of, um, of axes. Um, on which we're going to plot things. So then we can just go and plot uh, the data points we just calculated. So there are 25 data points there, uh, plotted a nice little x, y plot, x, y, z plot. And I think you can probably see that there's a kind of a little, little peak there. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the imaginative, imaginatively named interp2d function from the SciPy interpolate module. And this is going to, just like interp1d did, this is going to create something which is going to behave like a function. But unlike uh, interp1d, it's going to take x and y coordinates, and it's going to return a bunch of z coordinates. So we can import it, and then we go and call it. And again, as I said, we're calling it here um, with uh, x and y coordinates um, and the z coordinates, so the, the the full set of the 3D coordinates we want to interpolate over. Sometimes it won't be able to go and find a good value. Um, and so by telling it fill value equals zero, we're saying if you can't work out what it should be, rather than throwing an error or returning n not a number, uh, which is going to mess up our plots, just return zero. And also we're going to tell it to go and do cubic interpolation um, between the data points. OK. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use that interpolating function we've just created. Um, and we are going to uh, get it to show us a set of values on 101 by 101 grid. So the thing we've created with interp2d, this 2d interpolating function, takes a 1d set of x coordinates and a 1d set of y coordinates. And then internally, it causes mesh grid to make a grid and then returns you the z coordinates that correspond to that new grid of data. So here's how we use it. So I've created uh, a new set of x coordinates, so from minus 10 to plus 10 and 101 data points, um, and the same for uh, y values. I then uh, call my interpolating function with those x and y data, and it returns uh, a set of values. And what, as I said, the comment here is what it does is it actually calls mesh grid for you um, as part of the interpolation process. So what I get back out of Z 
is going to be 101 by 101 data points as a 2D array. So what that means, I then have to go and create the corresponding X coordinates and Y coordinates. So I create, use mesh grid, and that creates an array of 101 by 101 X coordinates and 101 by 101 Y coordinates. So that gives me three sets of coordinates, which are 101 by 101 grid. Um, and then I'm in a position where I can go off and uh, plot that. So this is how I go and do it. Um, so I'm going to make my 3D axes again. I've plotted the data points that I had. Um, and then I've called plot surface and I've given it X, Y, Z. The alpha equals 0 0.5 is making it semi-transparent. So you can see the underlying data points. And I've used the jet color map, which um, is um, the sort of nice spectra there. Um, and then I just limit the, the heights as well to make it a nice set of axes. Now, what you can see here is it's, yes, it's, it has drawn a kind of smooth surface all over it, but it looks a bit wavy and wiggly. And that comes about because interpolation joins the dots and my dots are a bit all over the place. So the interpolation can only do so much to go and make an approximation of that data. Um, and with cubic interpolation as well, and not a huge number of data points, it can introduce some sort of false dips and wiggles and waves that aren't really in your data at all. Again, just to emphasize again, this is the problem with interpolating data. You are making assumptions about what is happening between your data points that might not be justified. So if you have a proper model to fit, do that. Otherwise, maybe interpolation is the best you can do. So just to compare it with, if we do the same, we calculate the actual real proper values for that same data set, then you see the function looks a lot nicer and smoother. Um, so if you compare that to what we had on the previous slide, you can see that interpolation is only an approximation. It's not perfect. Of course, if we found more data points and therefore interpolating over a bigger grid, then uh, the uh, interpolation function would look a lot better compared to what we have. I've kind of deliberately shown you a bad example to show you the, the limitations of interpolation. One particular problem of, of usage that where we do use interpolation um, for real is in situations where we have data which is nearly, but not quite on a regular grid. And this happens surprisingly often um, in, in real measurements. Um, so example, one, one particular set of things where this can often occur is if you get data from a scanning probe microscope, like an atomic force microscope or a scanning tunneling microscope. So generally these instruments can record extremely accurately exactly where the tip was when it did a measurement. But what they can't do so well is position their tip very, very accurately. So they, there are various non-linearities in the piezoelectric motors that go and move the tip around. And as a result of that, you know exactly where your tip is, but you can't really tell it to go one nanometer further on or 50 nanometers further on. It'll always go an approximation to how far you tell it to move. And so the data you get back is in the form of X, Y, Z coordinates, but the X and the Ys are not on a particularly good grid. And because this is a very common problem, SciPy interpolate provides a grid data function that just does this all in one go. So here's how you go about using it. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create some X and Y data points. I'm going to shift them around in X and Y by just adding a bit of random noise to them. And then I'm going to go and calculate exactly what my um, function would give me for those X and Y data points. So in this particular example here, I'm not introducing noise in Z. I'm just doing it as though I couldn't quite get my positioning in X and Y exactly right. And so I didn't evaluate my function in exactly the right places in X and Y. So then I'm going to go and call the grid data. I go and give it my X, Y and Z coordinates. And grid data wants those just as 1D arrays. So NumPy has this handy dot method, which will just take any array of any dimension 
and turn it into a one-dimensional array for you. Um, so I go and call the grid data with that. I give it my um, new coordinates. That's the big X and big Y. So those are what I had before. Those are where I'd used mesh grid um, to go and create uh, a, a nice big array of data points. Um, again, I tell it the fill value and I tell it I want um, cubic interpolation. Um, it's called method in grid data. So um, this is what we've got and done with. Um, so we've started off with our, our um, uh, grid of 21 data point, 21 by 21 data points. And I'm now going to regrid that data onto a denser grid and also a regular grid with grid data. And so this is the result. So um, again, I'm going to make the 3D plot. I've plotted out um, my X, Y, and Z coordinates of black data points. Um, and then on top of that, I'm going to plot the surface I get from the uh, grid data function. So the big X and the big Y with the X and Y coordinates, I also passed into grid data, say, this is what I want you to grid the data onto. And then Z was the result of doing that. And again, I've used the jet color map and I've set the transparency to 50% just so you can see the data points. And um, you can see that because I've got quite a few data points here, grid data has done a fairly good job. Um, I've now got 21 by 21 data points. And my grid's got a little bit denser, which is why the interpolation looks better than we had before. So grid data is not doing anything that we hadn't done previously. It's just doing it all in one go for us. So it's creating the interpolation function and then evaluating it over a regular grid, but just as one line, because it's a, an operation you want to do quite often.